Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. This video has been a long time coming, uh, about three years, yeah, three years coming because the last time I made this video, I think it was in December or in November 2020. So today I'll be updating my favorite ongoing series of all time as of uh, January 2024 or the end of 2023. I plan to post this one in December, but again, life got too busy. Finally, I have some time to record this video today and well, because it has been three years since I've made this video, obviously this list will change a lot. I think uh, in total, we have about uh, six series from the previous list remaining. The remaining nine are completely new addition uh, to this list. Not only some of my favorite ongoing series in the previous list has been completed and have been read, but obviously because I like to read uh, ongoing and also completed series, probably uh, equally, that's really the reason why there are nine new additions to this list of favorite ongoing series. And yeah, I have a different category for favorite completed and favorite ongoing series. And although it is a great thing to always read an amazing completed fantasy or sci-fi series, but sometimes it is worth it to wait for each book in the series together with all the readers and the fans of the particular series. It's kind of like joining the hype and the community, waiting and also anticipating for the new amazing book. I only have two rules for this list. One, the series is not completed yet, it is still ongoing. And second, I have read at least two books in the series. In total, I think I am in the middle of reading about 100 ongoing series, more than 100 ongoing series. And today, I'll be talking about the top 15 in my opinion. And let's begin with number 15. At the number 15 spot, we have The Burning by Evan Winter. Currently, two books are out, uh, The Rage of Dragons and also The Fires of Vengeance. It has been three years, uh, more than three years since Fires of Vengeance came out, I think. Uh, if I remember correctly, The Fires of Vengeance, the second book came out in the year 2020, and The Lord of Demons, the third and the penultimate installment in The Burning, is still not out yet. Hopefully, that will come out this year or maybe uh, next year. I have no idea regarding the status of this series, but I do love The Rage of Dragons and also The Fires of Vengeance. I think if you are looking for a great revenge story with a similar style of pacing, similar to the Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown, you really cannot go wrong with uh, the Burning series. Even more so if you love close quarter combat scenes that is kind of reminiscent of Joe Abercrombie, but rest assured this is a completely different kind of series compared to the Red Rising Saga or the first law. And yeah, the Zoza inspired world building was something that is uh, outside of my comfort zone and I'm glad to read how Evan Winter implemented it to his world building. And there are some uh, training elements in uh, the series, I do not want to spoil it for you. There are some training elements in the series that kind of reminded me of playing Demon Souls or Dark Souls from, uh, from software games. And yeah, I think that is a really nice touch. I think if you have read this book, if you have read this series, you will know what I'm talking about. And I am definitely waiting for the third book in the series, The Lord of Demons, uh, to come out and then read it. Probably I have to do a second read of the entire series from the beginning first though. And moving on to the next one, at the number 14 spot, we have something new in this list and it is The Dark Water Legacy by Chris Wooding. This is a trilogy. The first one is The Amber Blade and the second one is The Shadow Casket. In my opinion, this is one of the most underrated and underhyped epic fantasy series out there. I know that The Shadow Casket, at least in my opinion, was not as good as The Amber Blade, but I think it is still worth the read. The Amber Blade in particular was just absolutely incredible if you love character-driven epic fantasy with something like a classic fantasy that is told with a modern voice. You cannot go wrong with reading The Dark Water Legacy. The main characters, the brotherhood between the main characters and the newfound group of Ragtag group, I think they are just so well written and I think Chris Wooding has a talent in making sure the personal conflict of each character have significant impact on the reader. I really love The Dark Water Legacy and I have read The Ember Blade twice now and both reading experience were incredible. I am definitely waiting for the third book in the series uh, to be out. But Chris Wooding has mentioned it won't be out uh, anytime soon. Probably, well, considering that The Shadow Casket actually came out about four or three years after The Amber Blade, I think the same thing will happen again uh, to the third book in the series. Moving on to the number 13 spot, we have another new series on this list, and it is The Bloodsworn Saga by John Gwynn. The first book is The Shadow of the Gods, and then The Hunger of the Gods, and finally, uh, The Fury of the Gods. Many have kind of speculated that the third book will be released uh, this year. The Fury of the Gods will probably be released in October, 
2024 because it is available on Amazon UK now. But in my opinion, until there is official confirmation, do not think of this as the final release date. It might be, it just might be a placeholder date. But as far as quality goes, I think the Shadow of the Gods, if we're talking about technicality, I think the Shadow of the Gods is the best first book in the series written by John Gwynn. But if I have to choose which one I love more between Malice and also the Shadow of the Gods, after some time have passed, I think my heart still belongs to Malice. There are something really special there. Uh, John Gwynn crafted some of the most endearing cast of characters in The Faithful and the Fallen, but still, Orca, one of the main characters in the Bloodstone Saga, is one of my favorite characters of all time. And the theme of revenge, family, and also found family in the Bloodstone Saga, all of them were so well written. I think they are some of the key aspects of John Gwynn's storytelling. And because this is John Gwynn we're talking about with the touch of Norse mythology aspect in the world building, you can absolutely expect great and incredible close quarter combat scenes. He absolutely nailed combat scenes always. And I love uh, the Blood Soul Saga. I think after I do a second read of the series, I think there's a good chance this will really increase in my ranking. Plus, I always think that John Gwynn excels most when he's writing the final book of a series like Red, A Time of Courage, and I think The Fury of the Gods will become the best book in the trilogy as well. At the number 12 spot, we have The Gentleman Bastards by Scott Lynch. And yeah, this was in my previous list as well. One of the Bermuda Triangles of Epic Fantasy. And if you know what I'm talking about when I, when I said uh, the Bermuda Triangle, then you will see the remaining two Bermuda Triangles uh, in today's list as well. But first, The Gentleman Bastards. I think it is still one of the best epic fantasy series. And I know it has been oh, seven years Probably this is the eighth year since the release of the third book, uh, Republic of Thieves. And yeah, it has been a while, but still many people are still waiting for the Thorn of Ember Lane uh, to come out. It is still in many people's list of most anticipated fantasy book. And I totally understand that. The bromance in this series is practically close to being unmatched in epic fantasy. Locke and Jean and also the crew of the Gentleman Bastards are some of the best groups that I have ever read in fantasy. And the highest a centered narrative in the lives of Loch Lamora, the first book in the series, is still one of the best ones. Maybe even the best high-centered fantasy book that I have ever read to this day. And I love uh, the second book as well, Red Seas and the Red Skies, even though that one is more of a combination between heist and also pirate or nautical adventures. But still, Scotland's storytelling remains strong in the second book as well. I do think that the third book, A Republic of Thieves, is the weakest of the three available books in the series so far. But still, I'm excited to read Thorn of Amber Lane whenever it's ready. And whenever that time comes, I will definitely be reading the series from the beginning again. And moving on, the next three series on this list, they are all self-published fantasy series and they are in my opinion, the best ongoing sub published fantasy series right now. And at the number 11 spot, we have The Mortal Techniques by Rob J. Hayes. This is a series of standalone novels taking place in the same world. Currently, the series consists of A Never Die, and then Pond's Gambit, and finally, Spirits of Vengeance. I love all three books. But in my opinion, Never Die and also Spirits of Vengeance are the best book in the series so far. If you love wuja, if you love anime-inspired battles, you love uh, fast-paced action and also well-written characters, you must try reading uh, the Mortal Technique series. I think to this day, it is still Rob J. Hayes' uh, best books. And if you want a copy of the Broken Binding Press Edition of Never Die, I think it is still available now and make sure to get it before it's sold out. But yeah, I really love this series. I have no idea how many books are remaining in the series actually, but I think uh, I have a feeling at least two, two more books before we reach the end of the Mortal Techniques. And Rob J. Hayes, is confident that his newest and upcoming books, uh, The God Eater Saga, is his best work. And that makes me even more excited for The God Eater Saga because I already love Mortal Techniques uh, very much. And now we are entering the top 10 spot. And at the number 10 spot, I'm going to choose uh, The Rairia Chronicles by Michael J. Sullivan. So this is the prequel series to The Rairia Revelations. The Rairia Revelations is finished. The Legends of the First Empire is finished. And then the bridge series, uh, The Rise and Fall Trilogy, is also finished. So now, I think only The Rairia Chronicles need to be completed and then the world of Elon might be totally finished. And the total 
In total, I think there will be eight books in the Radia Chronicles, and Jumindor, the fifth book in the series, is coming uh, this year. As I read more books in the Radia Chronicles, there is always a good chance that this ranking, the position of the Radia Chronicles in this ranking, will increase because I love Royce and Hadrian very much. And for those of you who don't know, the Radia Chronicles is a series of novels taking place before the events of the Radia Revelations for the purpose of detailing the encounter and the many missions that Royce and Hadrian did together before they entered the storyline in the Raria Revelations. And it is definitely more well written compared to the Raria Revelations. Love this uh, series very much. I think The Death of Dulgad, the third book in the series, is still my favorite in the Raria Chronicles, but there is no bad book in the Raria Chronicles. I love them all and who knows, maybe Jumindor will become the best one in the Raria Chronicles because if you have read the Raria Revelations, you will know the significance of the name Jumindor uh, in the entire series or the, in the entire narrative. It has been mentioned plenty of times in the Raria Revelations after all. And I really love uh, getting a detailed insight into what happened before the events of Raria Revelations. Really good series and again, Royce and Hadrian is one of the best uh, bromance in epic fantasy ever. And after that, we have probably the best ongoing sub hobbies fantasy series right now, and that is The Bound and the Broken by Ryan Cahill. Currently, uh, three main books are out, and also three novellas are also out. So they consist of uh, the main books first, of Blood and Fire, of Darkness and Light, and of War and Ruin. Of Empires and Dust might be released this year or probably uh, next year. And then the novellas are The Fall, The Exile, and finally The Ice. Yeah, he is an incredibly productive author. And I have the pleasure to actually chat with uh, Ryan Cahill in person when he was in Bali, and I went to Bali as well. It was a really great time, and I definitely look forward to a reading of Empires and Dust whenever it's ready. Not gonna lie, The Bun and the Broken and also Ryan Cahill is one of the most uh, often featured series and author on my YouTube channel, and for many good reasons. If you want a great Dragon Rider epic fantasy, a series that reminded you of the classic but written in a more modern style with all the detailed and incredible action since reminiscence of John Gwynn's, you cannot go wrong with reading The Bound and the Broken. I love this series. And similar to all the previous books I listed in today's uh, video, I expect this ranking will only go up with more books in the series. And I look forward to seeing that happen. And speaking of classic fantasy suitable for modern fantasy readers, well, for the next one is something new to this list again. And it is uh, The Austin Art Saga by Tad Williams. Now I have finished reading Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Trilogy. Loved it very much, especially The Dragon Bone Chair and also Two Green Angel Tower. But I haven't started reading The Last King of Austin Art yet. The final book in The Austin Art Saga is not actually The Navigator's Children, even though it will conclude uh, The Last King of Austin Art series, which is the sequel series taking place uh, decades after the events of Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Trilogy. I heard that Tad Williams do plan to write more standalone or duology books taking place like thousands of years before the events of Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Trilogy. So yeah, we still we will still get more books in the Austin art world. But back to my point, I love Tad Williams' writing style very much, and it is kind of rare to get a fantasy series with world building as intricate and well designed as Tad Williams. And I was so amazed when I read uh, The Dragon Bone Chair for the first time. It kind of felt nostalgic. It is one of the things that I relate the most about Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Shuji. It felt nostalgic somehow, even though it was the first time I read through the series. For many years, I keep on hearing how this series inspired A Song of Ice and Fire, and then The King Killer Chronicle, and then many other series out there. And it has also become many readers' gateway to epic fantasy. And now I finally understand why. The characters are so likable. Simon, Binabek, Joshua, Duke Isgrimner, and then many other characters in the series. And if you also love reading lyrical prose in your epic fantasy, then yes, you should read Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Trilogy, and definitely after that, The Last King of Austin Art. Those who have read both seem to agree that The Last King of Austin Art is superior to Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn Trilogy, and I am so excited to start that most likely uh, next month. Yeah, I will start reading The Witchwood Crown most likely next month. And at the number 7 spot, we have The World of the Unhumed Throne by Brian Staveley. Now, if I'm only judging this by the first three books, uh, in the Chronicles of the Unhumed Throne trilogy, 
this series will not appear on my list of favorite ongoing or completed series. Don't, do not get me wrong here. I enjoyed reading Chronicle of the Unhumed Rune, but they are not some of the best epic fantasy series uh, out there in my opinion. But Skullsworn and then especially uh, the newest book in the sequel series to the Chronicle of the Unhumed Rune, The Empire's Ruin, I think The Empire's Ruin is just a masterpiece in epic fantasy. Gwena is one of my favorite characters in speculative fiction and also reading uh, in the Empire's Ruin actually reminded me of reading The Way of Kings for the first time. It was that good, except that probably this one is more grim and the language is more filthy. But the quality of Brian Stafeli's writing, in my opinion, is not inferior compared uh, to, let's say, the Austin Art Saga, which already reminded me of reading Robin Hobbs' prose. But that's how much uh, Brian Staffel's writing style click with me and the, his action scenes, they are so intense and they are so vivid in my mind. I can already imagine some of the scenes in The Empire's Ruin and also Skullsworn right now. Heck, even in the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne Shuji. Not sure when the second book is coming out, it has been quite a while, but hopefully we will hear more regarding the release of the sequel. And at the number six spot, we have A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. I know some of you might think that I am insane for putting this only at the number six spot, but as I said, if I only talk about the first three books, The Game of Thrones, A Clash of Kings, and A Storm of Swords, then, well, that's another different story. But I'm including my thoughts on A Feast for Crows and also A Dance with Dragons. And I did not like reading A Feast for Crows or A Dance with Dragons uh, on my first read anyway, because uh, I think it's kind of hard uh, to jump into those books after reading A Storm of Swords, which is absolutely incredible and one of the best books in epic fantasy. Well, the same also can be said for the uh, for A Game of Thrones and A Clash of Kings. Not many authors can craft world building as good as George R. R. Martin. I think George Martin is really good at using inspirations and making them his own thing in The Song of Ice and Fire. After reading A Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, I can already see the inspirations that he got from memory, sorrow, and dawn, but I never felt like they were copycats. It definitely felt like it was inspired from memory, sorrow, and dawn trilogy, partly anyway, and it is still George Martin's own thing. It is still the world of Westeros, and also the entire series contained one of the most intense familial dispute, and I totally believe that A Song of Ice and Fire, or maybe the Game of Thrones uh, TV show adaptation, is responsible for sparking uh, the passion to read fantasy books in so many current uh, fantasy readers, myself included uh, plenty of years ago. And remember that A Song of Ice and Fire is in the number six spot with a caveat that I haven't done a second read of the entire series, even though I have read everything in the world of A Song of Ice and Fire. And many readers, many fans of the series, even those who initially dislike A Feast for Crows and also A Dance with Dragons, convinced me that they end up loving A Feast for Crows and A Dance with Dragons on their second read and more. So I expect that to happen whenever I manage to find the time to do a second read of A Song of Ice and Fire. And as I said in the beginning when I talk about The Gentleman Bastard, Obviously, A Song of Ice and Fire is one of the Bermuda Triangle of epic fantasy. One more, you will know what that is, and I will mention that really soon. But before that, the number five spot, I have The Band by Nicholas Eames. Yes, I love Kings of the Wild and Bloody Rose uh, that much. Comedy, emotional moments, and then a great action scenes, and all the music, and Final Fantasy and video games, uh, Easter eggs, they were all something that I really love. Uh, reading an epic fantasy. It is incredibly rare to find a fantasy author that can combine all of this as good as Nicholas Imps did uh, in the band series. It is kind of crazy though that I still don't have a hardcover edition of the band series. Hopefully there will be a special edition someday. I hope you're hearing this, huh? the broken binding. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely love the band series. And you know, if you are a fan of gaming as well, especially Final Fantasy or The Shadow of the Colossus and more, you must read the band trilogy. And I know, uh, just like The Gentleman Bastard, it has been plenty of years uh, since the release of Bloody Rose. I think Bloody Rose came out in 2018. So yeah, it has been five years and The Outlaw Empire, the third book in the trilogy, is still not out yet. 
But to be fair, the wait for the third book, even though it is kind of painful as well, not only it will be worth it, but Kings of the Wild and also Bloody Rose, they are still standalone novels. Con connecting standalone novels, but still standalone with no cliffhanger. This is not like A Dance with Dragons or The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. And speaking of Patrick Rothfuss, the fourth series, the fourth favorite ongoing series on this list is The King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss. And this was in my previous list in the Rebounder Up spot. And I actually said in my previous list that I definitely think uh, the position of the King Killer Chronicle in the number two spot will never be changed. Apparently, that is wrong. But before that, let me just say that Rothfuss Proust in the King Killer Chronicle is still one of the best in epic fantasy. I love every word and every sentence that Patrick Rothfuss crafted and structured in the King Killer Chronicle. It is just so beautiful, lyrical, and also everything seems meticulously uh, designed. And you know what Lynn manuel Miranda and many readers said, no one writes like Patrick Rothfuss and I am inclined to agree with that, especially if you are reading this uh, for the second time and beyond. There are so many world building and so many secrets behind the world of Tamaran and the four corners of civilization. And because of that, I think it is also why it is so painful uh, to wait for the doors of stone. It's been more than a decade, just like the Winds of Winter, both A Dance with Dragons and The Wise Man's Fear came out in the year 2011. It has been 12 years and this year will be the 13th year ever since The Wise Man's Sphere came out. And honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea whether uh, The Doors of Stone will ever be released or not. But as far as writing quality and also preference of ongoing fantasy series, this is definitely one of my favorite of all time. And now we are entering the top three spot. And for the next two, I must say, they are both my pick for the runner off spot. So consider these next two in the second position because they are both my current favorite sci-fi series of all time. Let's start with the first one, and that is, of course, The Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown. I have talked about The Red Rising Saga many times on my channel now, even though I have done probably only two dedicated videos uh, to anything related to The Red Rising Saga, but this is, especially the first trilogy, is a series that means a lot uh, to me. The theme of camaraderie and also the way Pierce Brown writes is something that I really like uh, to read. I did the second read of The Red Rising Saga from the beginning uh, to the latest release, uh, Lightbringer, in preparation for the release of Lightbringer. And because of that, and because of reading Lightbringer as well, I have come to think that I love The Red Rising Saga even more than The King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss. But what's surprising about this list uh, today, and believe me, it surprised me as well. I never thought that I would find another sci-fi series to match a Red Rising Saga, but now there is a potential that this series might end up overtopping Red Rising Saga as the best sci-fi series of all time for me, and that is the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio. Currently, just like Red Rising Saga, in total there will be seven main books in the series, and so far, Five books are out, uh, The Empire of Silence and then Howling Dark, uh, Demon in White, my personal favorite of the entire series so far, Kingdoms of Death, Ashes of Man, and in April, the sixth book in the series, This Quiet Gods will be out, although it is possible to actually buy the e-arc now from Bain Books, and it is official. But the Sun Eater series, even though it is so hype and also so highly praised on Booktube, outside of Booktube, it is still very much underrated and under the radar, not gonna lie. I think the series is starting to gain traction though, and I'm really happy for that because this series absolutely deserve it. It actually put a shame to a lot of space opera series out there. When we're talking about space opera, galaxy-spanning uh, space opera series, so few of them actually came close to what I actually really want. And Sun Eater get that. Christopher Rocchio really gets what I love to read in science fiction or in space opera series or science fantasy, whatever you want to call it. But really, I absolutely love the Sun Eater series. I have done for full reviews of each book in the Sun Eater series on my YouTube channel. I haven't done that for any other series in my YouTube channel, where I post a full review for each book in the series. And that's because I have so many things I want to praise and talk about in each book in the Sun Eater. And although I did mention that no one writes like Patrick Rothfuss, well, Christopher Rocchio is really up there with him. In terms of quality of writing, even though his writing style is still considered different compared to Patrick Rothfuss' writing style, in my opinion. But yeah, as I mentioned, Red Rising Saga and the Sun Eater series is currently 
tight as being the best sci-fi series that I have ever read. But remember, I have read only four books in the Sun Eater. I have read six books in the Red Rising Saga. And so far in the Sun Eater series, I haven't gave any book in the series, any main book in the series, anything below five stars rating. So after I finish reading Asses of Man and maybe Disquiet Gods, I think this tight position will be broken. We will see and I will find out really soon. And who knows, maybe after I finish reading Asses of Man and also Disquiet Gods, there is a potential the Sun Eater could become my favorite ongoing series series of all time but for now my favorite ongoing series of all time is still the stormlight archive by brandon sanderson or to be more precise phase one of the stormlight archive by brandon sanderson and this will change after december because december when entered the final book in the stormlight archive will come out but this in my opinion is truly a masterpiece in epic fantasy and i continue to love it uh, to this day i have a soft spot for the Stormlight Archive, of course, because this is one of the first very big epic fantasy series novels that I read in 2016. And I was so mind blown and in love with the story of the characters in the world of Roshar. And even though I have read many books by Brandon Sanderson since I've read The Way of Kings and Words of Radiance in late 2016, I think the Stormlight Archive is still his best series of books. And that's why so many people are impatient uh, waiting for each release in the Stormlight Archive because Brandon Sanderson is truly crafting something special and insanely intricate in the Stormlight Archive. And the story of Kaladin and many characters in the Stormlight Archive have touched a lot of people heart. There are plenty of articles talking about this, but how we can see and relate to Kaladin's struggle with depression and many more in the series. I don't consider myself having a depression, but I can certainly connect and relate uh, to Kaladin Stormblast, one of my favorite characters of all time. But yeah, just like the Sun Eater series, there are just too many things to talk about in one video regarding all the greatness in Stormlight Archive. But I think that's pretty much it uh, from me today. These are at the moment my list for my favorite ongoing series of all time. I think I will only update this at least after two years have passed. But personally speaking, I think it is interesting to find out how many series changes in ranking and how many new series entered this kind of list for me and also for other readers and reviewers. But yeah, that's my list. Uh, do tell me what you think about the list that I mentioned and what are some of your favorite ongoing series right now. I know that it can be a pain to start reading ongoing series sometimes, but I do believe that this 15 series are worth your time and journey, even in their incomplete state, and we can wait for the next book uh, together. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it from me today. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.